Well, howdy. You know what I be doing? Mining for gold. <laughs> oh, not really. Uh, but it's in the ground. You got to dig it out. And unlike gold, you can eat it. That's right. I'm digging potatoes. It's late, late July. And uh, you know why I like potatoes so well? So it's kind of exciting to dig in there and find what you got. Sometimes it ain't so exciting when you find little itty bitty ones. Did I tell you why I like potatoes? Well, the reason be you can't eat gold if you get to hungering, but you can eat taters. Now, taters are a great survival crop. The reason they're such a great survival crop, they last through the winter. Just gotta put them in a cool, dark root cellar. They last all winter, clean into the springtime. Try that with some lettuce once. Wilt up in the first week or two. Come when the snow be a blowing, you're gonna be a hungering. Now, I probably plant taters a little different than the average folk. I kind of emulate, meaning I like to copy Paul Gauchy. He's kind of the father of back to Eden gardening, which is kind of thought of as gardening in wood chips, but it's really like gardening in mulch. But uh, I'm really more in wood chips here. Now, I like to take a fork, fork these up, and then dig them out and dig them loose with my hands. So I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like here. Dig down in here. Um, this is a nice big looking plant. Kind of thing just to show you a nice one. And then, but you can see the plant be dying here. It's uh, like I said, late July. Uh, normally they would uh, not uh, be dying. Ooh, that's a nice one. They would not be dying quite so fast. Uh, we've had a really dry July and everything kind of slowed down. So, um, so like I like to dig it down in here like this. See what, oh, there's one popped out. Now when you're planting them into wood chips like this or leaf, leaf mold, um, you you, uh, you're you not really digging in the dirt. You're just kind of, they're, they're growing right here on the surface of the dirt. You can see how, how that potato works there, comes up off the root system like so. And we're gonna take him along. Look at these uglies. I don't know what causes this little pit marked spots on the taters. Don't much like it, so that's the bad bin. This is the good bin so far put the large ones and pretty ones in there now like I was saying you uh, when you grow potatoes in uh, <laughs> when you grow taters uh, in the back to Eden gardening method you don't plant them in the soil and that keeps you from destroying the structure of the soil and uh, this should get theoretically better every year because these break down a little bit more. Now you're going to have to add fresh, fresh stuff to the top, but uh, but as it breaks down, I notice the, the potatoes start doing better every year. This is only my second year gardening this way. Woo! Nice and that definitely goes in the nice bin. Look at that. Now, um, this year was kind of a setback over last year because we had rain all summer last year. This year things dried up real bad. So you got things like that affecting what you're doing. But I think we've got another nice one there. You can see how much this fun be. Just going out here and digging. Hey, while I was out here digging, I saw this fat little guy and I named him Fred. Yeah, here he is. Say hi to Fred the Frog. He's not used to seeing himself in a camera. Now, you know, he's, uh, 
He's part of our insect control. He likes to eat all the little bugs that come along. He's got real cool eyes. Don't you wish you had eyes like that? I like his little chirpy noises. Well, I better let Fred the Frog go so he can get back to well, work. It's high time that I get inside for lunch. I picked uh, most of the remainder of the patch today, but I got maybe another third yet to do. I got, uh, you see the crop here, four of these bins. Uh, just a little over that. Now, a lot of people when they plant their taters in the springtime, they cut this potato up into so four or five pieces, keeping a little eye in each one. And they plant that wee little piece in the ground. Now, that saves your tater, but I learned from Paul Gauchy that when you plant your tater, you want to plant the whole potato, and that fuels the rest of the plant for a nice healthy plant. That is an extra big fuel pack as opposed to a tiny little piece giving you a wee little toppy, lots less power. So uh, Paul Gauchy learned this from the Holy Scriptures that you're supposed to put back, give back uh, your firstborn, your without blemish. I guess it's more the without blemish and your best. And so you take your biggest potatoes and put them back in the ground and they have the genetic potential uh, and they also were a very happy healthy potato to make future generations of happy healthy taters looks well fed nice and chubby oh what what do you have there all oh, potatoes from Bernie's I do love myself a good potato, you know, I think I could fry this one, I could chop this one, bake this one, uh, I think I mashed this funny looking one, it's got the kind of going bad there, uh, we could use this one for potato salad, oh yeah, what's that you say? You, you want to know what potatoes have to do with art? Mm. Smells earthy. Say, have you ever done a potato print? Yeah, no. Well, we need to fix that. Let's pick a nice big potato. I think this looks like a nice big one. And this one, we're not going to eat. It's going to become art. Well, a good place to start is think about the picture that you'll do you already have something drawn that you want to frame or uh, are you making the frame and then do the drawing later? But if you have something like this fish, maybe the border frame should relate, have something in common with it. Like uh, with fish, it could have hooks or little fish, water, seaweed, uh, seashells. These all be good uh, related subjects, but they don't have to be. It could simply be a sort of an abstract pattern. And I am really into abstract patterns right now more. And I created this little worksheet here. And uh, it's helping me draw positive and negative shape designs. When you go to create your own, uh, the basic framework that I have started here, uh, Joe, a very simple style. Let's say we take a line from here over following the grid, then I do it the opposite side, and then just keep that pattern going. What this does is get you a nice framework of sort of an interconnected weave. So this white snaky kind of goes like that. And then from here on, you just kind of add to it within this sort of spiral shape uh, activity. So I'm putting little decorative tips on here and do it on all of them and then see what else you can do to beautify it. Uh, 
maybe I simply round the corner here, round the corner on this one. And then I would do the same here, same here, and here. Before you know it, it starts to look a little different than what you started with. And uh, we can add some more things as we go. Maybe I want to make a little decorative thing here. And ideally, you, the black design becomes almost as important as the white design. Like here, it's easy to see this weird wormy thing, but it's also easy to see the black, black almost banisters or decorative s spindles. One of the fun things about this project is that you, you, you have a frame in the end with a nice backing, beautiful prints on the side, and just makes everything a little bit more uh, 3D. And so if you want, um, well, what we need to do for that frame is, this is my potato print frame template. And you need to trace this onto your cardstock, heavy manila. And on the back, we have tracing paper taped down. And we lay that on top of our cardstock. If you had colored cardstock, it would be even more exciting. And tape in all four corners, just to hold this on. All right, and the other two corners. Now, let me give you a close up. The measurements that are needed, right there. And the dotted lines are where you score and fold. The orange line is where you, you cut. And over here again, measurements. The full paper size is 12 by 15. Opening for picture, six inches by nine. Outer frame, 10 inches by 13. And now trace over everything with a ruler, right? So just lay your ruler along this and trace over it and just keep tracing over all the lines. And when you're done, you take it off and you do the cutting and scoring and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Okay, very interesting. And uh, by scoring it, we mean that you take a sharp tool and we need to score on all the dotted line. So there's a lot of scoring that's taking place and you lay your ruler on there and you take your sharp tool and go back and forth over it at least twice with a good bit of pressure. You don't want to cut through but what this is going to do allows you to fold, fold this right along the line and get a crisp edge as opposed to a crinkly one with no score. So we will come back to putting this all together. We don't, don't put it together until after it is printed. I messed around a little bit with different watercolor backgrounds and different colored printing inks. And then I decided to paint purple on just pretty much solid purple on the back of mine. Now notice I'm using two different brushes. One brush I put down water first. And then with the other brush I put down the intense purple and um, I can fade or blend the two colors together. And I'm switching back over to the, the brush with just water in it. And this allows you to do a little bit of blending rather than just a solid color. And um, so, but you don't have to watercolor your background. You can just leave it plain if, if that uh, works with what you're trying to do. Next, take a saw may seem a little like overkill but and you cut the potato long ways if you need lots of surface area for for your print now you can also cut it the other way short ways if you if you want more of a handhold but uh so you cut through with the saw we're through
Look at that. After you've got it cut in half, it's not a bad idea to press it on a piece of scrap paper and see if the moisture shows up the whole way around. If, if there's a low area or a nicks or just poorly cut, it, won't, it just can't make a good print. Next, you want to cut out a spare design that's one and a half by three inches long, if that's the size you're doing. Lay the paper on your potato, center it so you have plenty of space to work. Then take a pencil and trace around the outline. Once you've traced the outline, go ahead and take your palette knife or some other type of fairly sharp knife and cut straight in from each of the four edges. And this uh, will, will give you nice alignment. Now, now, if you want a circular or oval, then, then you don't cut the edges off this way. But I found it easier to line up a square or a rectangle. Next, go back to your favorite design. Take a extra soft charcoal and color in all the black areas nice and thick. Then cut it out. I like to dab the potato with a paper towel just to dry it off a little bit. Then take your drawing, center the charcoal down, start in the center, rub your finger over it very carefully that the image does not move. And I did notice I did from about the center outward. Then I'm going to turn it around and do from the center outward the other way. Voila! Now you still have to be careful because you can smudge that. Do not touch the charcoal. Okay, now for the fun part. We are going to take uh, this tool. It's a scratch knife. You can use any sharp tool that works for you. And we're going to outline the object cutting in I'd say about an eighth of an inch deep and it's nice to turn the object as you make the cut. It's a lot like carving wood but much much softer and you can make some distance pretty quickly. Uh, let's pretend that I have outlined the whole object just that way uh, another thing you can use is this dental tool. It outlines fairly well. I feel like it's a little harder to keep in line. Maybe slightly better with the detail. Now, once we've outlined everything, come in from the side and cut about eighth of an inch off. Do not go past the outline that we made. The most important cut is that outline cut, that it is neat and accurate. So that, because that's what's going to print. What we're removing now is the area that does not print. It just needs to be low enough that it does not pick up ink. You don't want to go super deep. Do not even go a quarter inch deep. That will make it more likely to dry out and and your your print shrink another important point to point out here point out oh, is that your potato is only very good for a day of printing it's okay by the second day third day questionable because it dries out if you leave it out but if you put it in a plastic bag it gets slimy and before you know it, P.U. Just nasty. I, I had this terrible odor in my, in my room and it took me a while to figure out it was not me, it was the potato. Now you're ready for an even more fun part and that's to try your print out on a scrap of paper. Uh, you can use tempera paint, acrylic paint, or well, probably the best is just a printing ink. It's a little thicker. But what the, in any case, you, you paint, paint the whole thing and then you, you stamp it down. You, to stamp well, you, you, you make sure you have it exactly where you want it first, and then you, you lay it, lower it down slowly, put both hands on top of it, give a little bit of downward pressure, but don't make sure it's, don't push so hard it slides across the paper. And you can try experimenting with two different colors. See how this works? Show it without moving it. OK. 
can pick it up, see what you have. And, oh, now you're ready for your final print. Get your uh, frame that you made. It's just not folded up yet. Draw a line right down the very center, uh, the long ways. And then you draw a line down the center the opposite way. And this will allow you to figure out where your first print is going to go. As with your practice printing, you want to use your paint and coat the entire piece every time you print. With this one, I would lined it up to the right of the line and then you press down nice and firm. There you go. When you get to the corners, you have a diagonal line and you can't just print to the edge. So you lay a protective scrap piece of paper right on that diagonal. You can even tape it down if that helps and then you line it up with your last print, whatever spacing you want between the prints, and make your print, remove the scrap, and there you go. Now let that dry before you um, work on that same corner. So that's why I'm going to the opposite corner to, to work. Here I'm going to the center of this line, I'm going to stamp right on the very center of it because it's such a narrow band. And then when I go to this other corner, uh, I can lay the paper over that. But again, make sure that other printed area is already dry. Once you've been printed the entire interior, you're ready to print the edges of your frame. That's the half in interior and exterior. Uh, edges. Notice the paper, the scrap underneath this when I do the, the edge printing. Do not want to get that. And here's the completed interior design. Now we're going to do the exterior edge and I change color to gold. So once it's dry, take your frame template and fold along all the scored and dotted lines. And you'll get a little frame like this and you're going to tape, glue, and temporarily tape the corners. The completed frame should look like this. Nice little half inch width on the inside and on the outside. And you uh, have this sort of excess flaps on the back. Next, you want to take masking tape and put them under the little tabbies. A good many pieces of tape with the sticky side facing up. Take your drawing, lay it on the table, and kind of eyeball where it would look good. Now we don't want to have to cut off excess paper, so hopefully your drawing is fairly centered and uh, right for the window. Then flip it over. Now this is a little tricky, but you want to reach under there and press the tape up onto the picture, keeping the picture pretty much where you wanted it. And once it is all sort of stuck on, you have to flip it back over to, to the front side and just make sure the frame is sort of secured neatly and in the way that you want. Now take some cardstock nine and three quarter inches wide by 12 and a half inches and stick it in the back, kind of bowing the ends and popping it in under there. And that acts as a nice backing and you have your completed piece.